Hello friends, how are you? I hope everyone is doing great. So in this video, so I will discuss what microservices are and what are the advantages and so the challenges that often arise uh, during like implementation. So uh, I will also like share like how to overcome these challenges by applying best practices and using like key tools and frameworks here. And apart from this, I will explore like practical examples here, including like Eureka server for like service discovery, API gateway for like request routing, and Spring Cloud config server for like centralized configuration management, and Jupkin for like distributed tracing, and Resilience 4G for like fault tolerance. Okay, so oh, these are the things I'm going to cover in this video. So before I'm going to jump into these examples, I would like to discuss what are the microservices are here and so microservices are like uh, it's known as a, like microservices architecture so it is an architectural style that structures an application as a collection of small and loosely coupled and independently deployable services here and each microservices is focused on specific business functionality and can communicate with other microservices through a well defined apis okay so often over like http rest or like messaging queues and what are the advantages of microservices here so microservices are like independently developed and deployable and scalable so let's say that you have a couple of microservices failures in one microservice don't affect the entire system here so that will improve the overall reliability here and so here the teams can choose the best technologies so here we have a multi technology support so teams can choose the best technology for each services here and that will enable the innovation and optimization here and microservices will align well with devops here so that will facilitate the continuous integration and deployment here okay and so what are the challenges uh, we will face while we implementing these microservices and how come how overcome these microservices by by following like best practices here so so first like complexity in service management so what is the challenge basically so, so if we are speaking about challenge here so managing numerous services can lead to a significant complexity here so especially in terms of dependencies and communication here okay so in that case uh, the best practices are you can use Eureka server for service management in microservices architecture okay and apart from this Eureka server, so you can use service mesh here. Okay, service mesh. So we have a couple of service meshes. So uh, you can use Istio. Okay, Istio as a service mesh for centralized management of service communication. Okay, and apart from this, you can use the Kubernetes for like orchestration as well. So this is uh, you can overcome this challenge. And the next one is data management and consistency. So if we're speaking about challenge here, so maintaining data consistency across distributed services is a difficult without traditional acid transactions, right? So if we're speaking about um, data consistency here, right? So the best practice is we can implement event driven architecture and sagas for like managing distributed transactions and achieving eventual consistency here. Okay. So and next one is network latency and reliability so network latency and reliability so if we're speaking about challenge here so inter-service communication over the network introduces a latency and potential points of failure so here we can implement the circuit breakers and retrace mechanism to handle the failures gracefully and reduce the latency impact here and security concerns so if you are having like a number of microservices a larger attack surface with multiple exposed services increases the security risk here so what we can do is by by following this best practice so that adopt zero trust security principles and enforce strong api gateway policies for authentication and authorization so we can achieve this and operational overhead so what is the challenge here so microservices require more infrastructure so in and that will leading to increase the operational complexity here okay so in this case we can automate the deployment with cicd pipelines and use the infrastructure as a code here so for example if you are here about um, terraform so terraform by 
using the terraform we can manage the infrastructure efficiently here so terraform if you define like some script in the terraform so that will take care of like how to create the resources and so this terraform will uh, maintain the state of the resources as well and so this is the overall architecture of microservices okay and so i'm going to cover all these examples in this video okay so uh, so let's say that whenever the request will comes before reaching to our microservices how this api gateway will handle that request okay so here an api gateway acts as a single entry point okay for all the clients into a microservices based applications here so it routes a request to appropriate microservices okay handles cross cutting concerns like security logging and rate limiting and also like simplifies the client side code by providing a unified interface here okay so here i am taking like spring cloud api gateway so apart from this we have a jewel as well so you can use jewel api gateway as well and the next one is eureka server okay so what is the eureka server here so eureka server is a service registry that is developed by a netflix as part of the spring cloud netflix suite okay so it is used for like service discovery and that will allow the microservices to find and communicate with each other okay without hard coding their network locations so for speaking about like how this eureka server will work so microservices register themselves okay with eureka server when the when they start up basically so providing their details such as a host name and ip address and the port so let's say that other microservices can query the eureka server here and to discover the instances of the registered services so which which will allows them to call the other services dynamically so the advantage is so dynamic scaling so supports like dynamic scaling as a services can register and deregister automatically okay this is the advantage of using eureka server and apart from this uh, eureka server we have a spring cloud config server okay so spring cloud config server is a centralized external configuration management tool for like distributed system okay it provides like server side and client side uh, support for like storing and serving the configuration files for the microservices so how it will work is basically a uh, centralized configuration i think you people may hear about git repository right so so it will stores the configuration properties in a centralized location that is github repository git repository so which can be accessed by all the microservices okay so uh, if, you're, if you're speaking about like how, how this uh, dynamic update will work is like services can refresh their configuration without restarting okay so so let's say that you have defined like uh, your configuration properties in a github git repository so you, uh, you can like refresh this uh, configurations without restarting any microservices okay so that will allow the dynamic updates to their application behavior basically okay and apart from this we have a spring cloud bus here and spring cloud bus uh, basically links the nodes of a distributed systems with a lightweight message brokers like rabbit mq or like kafka here so here i have implemented kafka but i have mentioned the rabbit mq so you can use like depends on your requirement so here basically it's used to propagate the state changes configuration changes across a cluster of microservices let's say that here we have a three instance of the microservices right so here so with the spring cloud config server uh, there is a one refresh in plans so with the help of that you can refresh only single instance so here with the spring cloud bus okay so spring cloud config server basically um, it will refresh like uh, all the microservices instances in a cluster here so that is a difference so there is a uh, spring cloud refresh event so by using that uh, you can refresh like all the instances of the services here so i will, I will explain like while we implementing uh, this spring cloud bus here and apart from this we have a circuit breaker okay so what is a circuit breaker a circuit breaker is a design pattern that it, that is used to prevent a cascading failures in a microservices architecture here okay so basically it stops the flow of request to failing a services to allow it to a recover or like to provide a fallback options right so uh, here we have like couple of options we have a closed state and open state and half open state 
So I will explain more while I am implementing this resilience 4J with uh, this circuit breaker. Okay. So till that time, let's go into the next one. So spring cloud load balancer. So what is spring cloud load balancer here? Spring cloud load balancer is a client side load balancer that distributes incoming traffic. Okay. Incoming um, incoming network traffic across multiple instances of the services okay to ensure the reliability and availability so client side load balancing basically uh, this spring cloud load balancer will support like client side load balancing so that will request uh, basically requests are distributed from the client's perspective so often using round robbing we have a random and other strategies as well so we can make use that uh, this algorithms and so uh, with the help of that so basically balances the load across the multiple services instances to handle the higher traffic basically okay and next one is like uh, Zipkin distributed tracing using Zipkin here so distributed tracing is a technique that is used to monitor and troubleshoot okay microservices architecture by, by tracking the request as they flow through the different services here right so whenever the request will come here so if you want to tracking the request as they flow different as they flow through the different services here right so then we can go for like distributed tracing using this zipkin here okay so uh, in the zipkin we have a different kinds of states we have a tracing visualization and troubleshooting so i will explain more while i am implementing this and so the benefit is so provides a deep insights uh, into like how services interact and where delays of course okay so we can find out by using this zipkin as well and apart from this i have uh, provided like some of the uh, monitoring and elk stack and databases and swagger documentation so monitoring so we can implement uh, uh, prometheus and grafana to monitor this microservices okay and uh, apart from this we have a elk stack so basically elk stack is consists of three open source tools like elastic such log stash and kibana that is used for like centralized logging log analysis and visualization okay and a databases you can choose like uh, one service for database or like multiple databases for like multiple services here and apart from this swagger documentation okay so this is how the overall architecture will look like and so i'm going to cover this all the examples here okay so yeah let's jump into the code without getting any delay